Hey, you're about to listen to an episode I did with one of my best friends and an incredible world-class communicator. He just wrote a book. His name is Brian Bullock, and we're talking about living for legacy. This is an important topic you need to get and listen to. So make sure before you watch this video, send it to a few friends. I'm telling you, it's going to benefit you and add so much value to your life. Check this episode out. Podcast family, we are so excited about today's episode. I have one of my favorite people on the planet, a world-class communicator, my big brother, coming from North Carolina. Yes, sir. He lives in he lived in Boston for some time, and then he he abandoned us and left us. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, but uh, I'm with Brian Bullock, Pastor Brian Bullock, all the way from North Carolina at World Overcomers Church. B, welcome to the podcast. Listen, man, I'm happy about being here. Okay, and I've been seeing you guys online, and uh, you got all these people here, and you know, now I'm here. It's my time. This is my this is my moment (laughs) to shine. This is my time to build legacy. I I was born and raised in Boston, and uh, it's always good to be back home, man. And you and I connected years ago. At the burger spot. What's that burger mm-hmm. spot? Uh, Shake Shack. Shake Shack. Shake Shack was good. Is Shake, Shake Shack still around? Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, ever since then, man, we've been we've been buddies and we've been pals. So and I love your dad, man. Shout out to PD, man. Pops is the best. You know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to get my muscles together. Pops I'm still trying best. to. I'm going to impress him one day. It's dude, he's happen. gotten bigger. He's oh, gotten bigger. Oh man, it's gonna happen. This dude, um, this dude's got a chest that just pops yes, out. Guys, yeah, it's, 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 it's it doesn't. If he's done, when as soon as he's done pastoring, he'll be fine. For Movies, real. I don't know, think people know this. So our, all of our audience, I don't know if you know this, but my dad, so Pastor Derek, our pastor, is the state record holder in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts for bench, wow. deadlift, for his age and weight. It was insane. Yes. I don't know if that still holds up, but yeah, this is, this is this is this is crazy. Yeah. So I'm just excited, man, to be a part of this and to be here. I love your family. And uh, let's go. Let's get into it, man. It's going to be awesome. I'm ready. So my man, he wrote a book this past year called Living for Legacy. Now, we're going to be discussing this because I read this book and I probably read it in a week. I'm not kidding. I, this whole thing is marked up. It's got highlighter everywhere. I have given this to probably six or seven of my young guys that I've been mentoring and developing. And so first question I have for you is just why did you write this book? Uh, interesting story behind how and why I wrote the book. Uh, a few years ago, I was invited to speak at a family reunion. It was not my family. It was some random family, like the Jones, Johnson family, something. They called and asked what I speak. And I was like, I don't really speak at family reunions, but I thought it would be interesting to to do it. So as I'm sitting down writing for this family reunion, I hear this phrase living for legacy. And so I write this whole thing about legacy. Um, Well, I took that speech that I did at that uh, family reunion and it turned into a sermon that I preached at my church. And within the sermon, I I do this Google search where I start talking about last names and come to find out that majority of the companies that we frequent are last names. Mm. So McDonald's is a last name, Abercrombie and Fitch, Hennessy, Gucci, Harley Davidson, Rolls Royce, Wells Fargo, uh, Pillsbury, Crafts, Marriott, Honda, all last names, Everybody. Welch's last name, you know. And so for me, I'm saying, OK, here it is. I'm not just giving my money to a product. I'm giving my money to a family. And I'm realizing that while I'm making every other family rich, I'm making my family broke. Mm. And so the McDonald's family is doing well, but the Bullock family is struggling. (laughs) So I'm saying I have to be living for more than that. God didn't just put me here just to make sure that the Kraft family name was was doing well Mm. and not to think about the Bullock family name at all. Mm. And so when I really decided, hey, I'm here to build legacy. I'm here to make sure that my last name is bigger than my first name. It's not that I don't give to other people. It's that I'm mindful that I'm connected to something bigger than myself. Mm. And so that clip, we took a clip from that sermon. We posted it online. And this clip on goes on viral. Social media, and it goes nuts. goes viral. Celebrities, athletes, pastors. I'm being interviewed on TV shows, podcasts. I'm just news people are calling me. It's, it's getting crazy yeah. because of this one clip. And uh, that one clip that went viral, we turned it into a book. And now the video is going viral on Facebook. It's going viral on TikTok with over six million views. I saw, right like, now. Yes. I, I was just scrolling on TikTok one yeah, day. Yes. I'm like, you know, I'm, I have these aspirations. I'm like, I'm gonna get on TikTok. You know, I'm just yeah. gonna have some fun on it. Meanwhile, I see B taking over the TikTok it's, space. It's, it's, He's on YouTube getting interviewed on podcasts. Yeah. This dude's on Instagram. This clip's going viral. I'm just like, dude, this guy is. Yeah. 
hit he hit something he struck a chord this is a topic that needs to be discussed so you wrote this book it's one of my favorite books i've read in 2020 and i'm not just saying that because he's my friend i say that because i am and i'll say this a lot to some of my team i am self-inspired i don't need much inspiration what i really need is a how-to mm. practicals and so you talk about legacy being the foot your footprint in the earth talk yeah. about that a little bit and explain the concept a little bit more and what they're gonna find in the content of this book. Yeah, I think legacy, let's define it. Legacy is something that is passed down. Uh, legacy is your mark. I call it your footprint in the earth. It is your contribution to the world. It's the idea that you were born on purpose with a purpose. Mm. Uh, that God says in Genesis 1, uh, or God says to Adam and Eve in the beginning of Genesis, he says, look, I want you to be fruitful and I want you to multiply. I want you to produce something. Uh, Jesus says uh, in John 15 uh, that I want you to bear fruit. I've mm -hmm. called you and, de and designed you to bear fruit. And then he says, what kind of fruit? He said, fruit that will last. So in other words, you're not here to be just a temporary voice in the earth. You're, you're here uh, to have a reverberation in the earth. When you were born, oh my gosh. Uh, your life mattered to heaven, not just to your mama. It mattered mm -hmm. to all the <laughs> earth. The earth was waiting for your arrival. And so I tell people your life is not a whisper, your life is a shout. Mm. And you are, your job is to produce something in the earth that will outlive you and outlast you. Come on, B. And most of the things that you see right now are things that exist because somebody thought of it 50 years ago and 100 years ago and 200 years ago. And so, I mean, we're, we're operating with phones that a man named Steve Jobs thought of. Mm -hmm. And Steve Jobs no longer here, but he's here. Mm. <laughs> That's mm. legacy. And I think that matters for all of us. 100%. I think every person has to realize, Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who's in heaven. Come on, B. So you are here to let your light shine. You're here to sell to the earth. You're here to build legacy. I don't care if you're shy or introvert or no. There shouldn't be no, I, there shouldn't be this idea that you lived here and we know what, who, who, who are you? No, your life matters, even if it's to your circle. And so, the idea of your footprint in the earth. I'm commanding and demanding people to be the best version of you, to leave your impact. I don't know if you've ever uh, uh, been around somebody who puts on a lot of cologne mm. or and you shake their hand and you, you say, hey brother, how you doing? And you walk away and it's like, why do I smell like Old Spice? And it's because <laughs> they left their scent. Their scent was so strong. It's like, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. They're, they're, your essence should be left around. When I walk That's away good. from you, I should be feeling like, man, I miss that, that there's something about you that stuck with me. And so whether or not you have 100,000 followers on Instagram or 10, your job is to leave a legacy everywhere. Oh, there's so much, there's so much you said that I, I need to debrief and we need to discuss. So if you haven't done it already, you need to get a notepad out, get your phone out, take some notes, because I promise you he's going to drop some knowledge on you real quick. Um, so there's a couple different lanes in my head. One is production and producing and, you know, re producing fruit in the earth, taking dominion over the earth. Because there's something to be said, you know, Jesus sees that fig tree and he's like, it, from a distance, it looked like it was healthy. He got closer and he realized it was not producing fruit. So we see God doesn't just want faithfulness. He wants faithfulness, but he also wants fruitfulness and to produce something in the earth. So I want to talk about that. But then there's this other side where, I see you have this aroma you're leaving, this legacy you're leaving. I remember the story you shared about getting the rental car. Yes. I would love for you to share that in a moment. But, you know, having something that outlasts you, your, your name is going to be carried on. You have kids. I have two kids. So I just had a second son. Congratulations. So I'm mama. thinking, thank you so yeah. much. I'm thinking a legacy all the time. So that's why this book was probably so much more than, it wasn't just practical. It was almost prophetic for me. It's like, I'm, this matters so much more. But real quick, speak to the younger younger men and younger women that need to read this when they're in their teens, when they're in their early 20s, because I think a lot of times we have this mentality in our culture, live it up, YOLO. <laughs> you know, we gotta, you know, live it up while you can in college, but yeah. it's like, no, this is a time that is your training years to, pre yeah. to propel you to greatness. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I think part of the reason why uh, legacy is such a confusing topic is because we've made it a funeral message. Ugh. It is something, all right, so-and-so's in the casket now. Let's talk about their legacy. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> we got to change the conversation from what legacy means when I die to what legacy means when I leave the room. Mm. What legacy means when I leave this job. What the legacy means when I leave the store. It's like I'm leaving my legacy everywhere. The only reason why I'm sitting at this table right now 
is because when I lived in Boston and we connected at Shake Shack, I left a legacy with you. Mm -hmm. And that legacy has remained. Mm -hmm. And I see so many young people who are like, YOLO, live it up. And what's happening is they they posted a picture at 18 and now they're 28 and can't get a job. Mm. Uh, they 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 were with somebody at 25 who they really didn't like, end up having a baby. And now 35, they can't escape it. They can't get away from this wow. person. And so the idea of I can do something today that stays in today and has no effect on tomorrow does not exist. Mm. Every action produces a reaction. And so what I'm telling people is, hey, if you want your tomorrow to be great, if you, you want 25 to look good, all right, then 21's got to be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Everything I'm doing right now, I thought about it years ago. Mm -hmm. Everything. I'm preaching, writing that book, I'm 37. I was thinking about that when I was 27. I was thinking about that when I was 32. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to get people to do is see the joy set before them. Mm -hmm. Right. This is what Jesus does. Jesus says, uh, he says, hey, the, the Bible says of Jesus in Hebrews that he endured the cross, despised the shame because of the joy that was set before him. I'm trying to get you to see the joy set before you. So good. The Bible says that without a vision, people perish, meaning another translation says without a vision, people cast off restraint. Because if I don't see something before me that's worth living for. Mm -hmm. Why be restrained? Why, why be restricted? I, why care about my life? I'm not going nowhere. I'm not doing anything. But if I can get you to see a vision, if I can get you to say, you know, I want to be here in 10 years. Mm -hmm. I want to be a millionaire by 40. I, I want to own a home by 26. I want to be debt free by 31. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to be I'm going to start a church by 32. Mm -hmm. Well, now today means something different. Big time. Because if without a vision, people die with a vision, people come alive. Oof. And so what we have to do is if I can give a 19 year old a vision, somebody send an offering I mean, right now. <laughs> me. Oh, my gosh. If I can give a 25 year old a vision, dude, if I can give a 27 year old a vision, if I can give an 18 year old a vision, I've given you enough ammunition to change the world. Mm. And so the, that's why I say let's stop talking about legacy at funerals. <laughs> let's let's start talking about legacy on your birthday. Let's start talking mm. about legacy in the house. Uh, because if I can get you to live for legacy, you will live your best life. I, 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 we can say YOLO, live, but I'm just telling you right now, you will live your best life and get eternity afterwards. Come on. <laughs> I can't even, I forget I'm asking questions because I'm just receiving right now. I'm in receive mode, <laughs> seriously. So you're talking about, you're talking about legacy. Probably the most important topic I think that you can communicate, certainly in the, your, your younger years. And I think it's not so much about your presence, but it's actually your absence. When you're leaving a room, like you said, when you leave a room, what is the feeling? When you're leaving life, what is that feeling? That I think about that all the time, all the time. More so because this is just, again, a how-to guide for building vision, building legacy. It's so, so important. So you wrote a few things down in your book that I just wanted to discuss because you said a few things that I'm just like, I need this man to debrief it because it right. is so good. It is so good, genuinely. So... Uh, you, you write this. This is one of your quotes. If you were to stop going to your church, your local gym, your country club, would anybody ask for you? Mm. When people feel, would people feel that you are no longer there? Mm. Ah, when I read that, I threw this book <laughs> against the wall, B. Talk about that a little bit. When you're writing that, what are you thinking? What's in your headspace? Um, when I'm thinking about that, first of all, we have to recognize that we're living in a society where every 12 minutes, one person commits suicide. In America... Every 12 minutes, somebody commits suicide. 85% well, of the population uh, battles low self-esteem. 16.2 uh, million Americans will have a major depressive episode in a given year. Mm. Part of the reason why that is, we just had an election. 100 million people who could vote don't vote. And part of the reason why they don't vote it's for the same reason why we have these the 16.2 million, same reason why uh, one person every 12 minutes is committing suicide, same reason why 85% of the population dealing with low self-esteem. I don't feel like I matter. Mm. I don't feel like my voice is heard. Mm. I don't feel like wow. I'm, I'm here for a reason. And let me say this to all the deep spiritual Christians who are just going to say, well, just find Jesus. I, I hear you. But those statistics include Christians. For sure. Those statistics include church people. Because it is possible to receive salvation 
But without discipleship, mm. without practical teaching, mm. without connection and relationship, mm -hmm. still not know who I am and why I'm 100%. here. And I think that the moment we tell people why you're here, now I start to realize, wait a minute, I've, I'm here to make an impact. And I'm not talking about being loud. I'm talking about your life being loud. Even if your voice is quiet, your life can still speak. Mm. And I'm thinking, if you're going to be on a job, you work that job. Do, I don't care if they put you on the fries at McDonald's. You better work them fries. You know what I'm saying? If, if you are someone who is whatever you do, whatever your sphere is, all I'm asking you to do is be the best version of you. Come on. Be the greatest version of you. When you was talking about fruitfulness earlier, where Jesus says, yeah, bear fruit. Because Jesus is like, I don't do lazy Christians. Mm -hmm. we, we're not going to do the whole, it's an oxymoron. you got saved, yeah. and now you just lay back. No, mm -hmm. there's, there's talent in you. There's something in you, and it is your responsibility to become the best version Come on, of B. yourself. Come on, B. My wife gets mad sometimes because uh, I have, like, you know, these, these uh, what do you call it, rag or the washcloth, mm -hmm. right? And I wash my face with the washcloth. I wring it out and then I put it on the on the thing. And my wife will come in and she's so mad because the thing is starting to stink. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's starting <laughs> to get that little mildewy, you know. And she's like, ah, you know, why did you do that? I'm like, what? I, I wring it out. She's like, no, you left more water in there. You didn't wring it out hard enough. I'm like, what? I, and of course, here she comes with her motherly arms, you know what I'm saying? And she takes it and she always. She always squeezes Twist. it. It's a little, it's a little tighter than that. I don't know how she does it, <laughs> but she, there's water left in there, and she's like, "Look, if you keep water in this thing, it's going to, it's going to start to stink. It's going to mm. get that mildew smell. Wow. And you don't want that." And I feel like people are living their lives like that. They, 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 they thought they, they haven't rang out their life enough. They're, wow. they're still gifting. They're still uh, ministry. They're still relationships. There's still stuff that's in their life. And so maybe your life stinks right now because you still have too much gift that you haven't used yet. Come on, B. You got to squeeze everything you can out of life. <laughs> That's the only way that you're going to actually be effective. And so I'm saying whatever it is you do, you don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be on television. Even if you're just going to be a mom, you be, be, live for legacy. Come Build on. something where you are so that when you're not around, and I'm not talking about death, even though that matters, I want to miss you. I, you should be so valuable that when you tell your job you're leaving, they beg, they, you, they should say, please, don't leave this job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because of the favor that you bring in that job, because of the perspective you bring in that job. Wow. When I leave my house to travel, my kids look out the window to see me, Dad, <laughs> Daddy, and I, I love it because I'm saying I made an impact. Mm. I don't want to leave for two days and come back home, and when I walk through the door, my kids are looking at the TV and saying, oh, yeah, 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 the man is here. No, See you no, later. No. See you later, yeah. No, no, no. When yeah. I walk through the door, my daughter runs to the door. She calls me Pastor Daddy. Thank God. <laughs> oh, my God. My daughter said, my son jumps up in my arms. Why? Because I'm, I left their legacy with them. I made such an impact. Wow. And so I just want you to be the type of person that says, I want to be missed. Mm. And I'm going to add so much value to everybody That's around so me good. that when I'm not around, you're going to miss my number. That's so good. So I'm listening to you talk and, you know, your life is a lot different than what it was a few years ago. You have seen success. You got copies of books being sold left and right. You're a speaker. You're viral on TikTok and YouTube and all this kind of stuff. But, but I've, I knew B before that happened. And so you've had this journey of becoming what you are now. And I know you're hungry. That's one of the things I get so inspired by seeing you is you just, you're wringing out that rag and you have all the, that, those gifts coming out. But talk about before you were viral. I think um, one thing I've been telling a lot of my team and even this podcast is, you know, stop trying to go viral. Start just adding value. As you add value, the more value you give to people, eventually it just connects, it hits, you position yourself, and then all of a sudden, bang, you are where you are and you're doing what you're doing. So give us like a little window uh, of of what was what was Brian like years before a book speaking traveling all over the world and preaching what was that like and what were you preparing for because you were saying you had vision yeah so you had the vision you knew where you were going you knew what you wanted to be I feel like a lot of us a lot of our audience is in that same place right now where we're sitting in the seat we're like I got crazy vision I just don't know how to get there what were you doing in that time to position yourself where you are now well this started in an old small Baptist church on Mass Ave in Boston. 
Um, you know, at seven. Don't despise I, the day of small beginnings. No, man. I preached my first sermon at seven years old. My grandfather called me or called my mother and said he needs to be preaching. Let him preach. I don't well, know why they gave a seven-year-old a microphone, um, but they did. Seven years old. Seven years old, standing on a chair, looking over the podium and, and preaching. Well, um, and before that, I've been preaching to my brothers. You know, I was doing communion with saltine crackers and mm. grape juice. You know, with my with my brothers, I was preaching to toys, baptizing people in the oh, Holy man, Ghost, preached, casting out I demons preached. out of your siblings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I was on stage one time. One of the biggest events I did was at Winterfest uh, in Rochester, New York, and it had to be two, three, four thousand uh, teenagers. Wow! And as I'm standing on the stage, I remember breaking down, crying, because the Lord showed me. When I was seven and wow. eight years old, I was in my room. I saw this crowd before. Wow. It wasn't the first time I seen this crowd. I, I was standing there, I said, oh my Lord, when I was eight, nine, t- I remember closing my eyes and seeing a crowd just like this and now I'm here. Oh my gosh. And so for me, man, it was, I'll be honest, I'll tell you exactly what it was. My grandfather, my elders, I served them. I served them to no end. Mm. Whatever they asked me to do, I did. If they told me to sit down, I sat. If they said preach, I preach. And because of my obedience to the Lord and because of my obedience to them, I received an anointing. Mm. I received a, a smearing. I received almost a transfer of, of, of wisdom beyond my age mm. um, because of my ability to serve them. And when so I do authority, yeah, we talk about that all the time. Yeah, yeah okay. it's, it's the key. A lot of people don't realize how powerful it is. So good. Because in today's day, to be submitted to, to someone is to be lesser than, mm. is to be weak is to be but that's really not the case there is strength in serving it is it is the fact that i could do my own thing but i don't mm. and that i i get it's acceleration and momentum mm. i get to utilize your strength and your wisdom and your experience for my own well wow. and so I was directing a choir. I got ordained as a, I got my minister's license when I was 18. Wow. Um, I got or, I got ordained as a minister when I was like 22. So all throughout my life, I've submitted to other people's leadership. Mm. And I just believe this, man. I believe that when you submit to someone else's leadership, God will bring you people who will submit to yours. Mm. And wow. I think that if you're going to be great, you have to sit under people who are great. And I think that pure greatness, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm scared of anyone who doesn't have a leader. I'm scared of anyone who's not submitted under someone else. Can I interject something real Absolutely. quick? I think what he said was so important, but I want to make one clarification. Greatness does not mean famous. No. I think we see people on YouTube, and YouTube is our pastors, or YouTube are the people that we submit to in, in preachers. But being great doesn't mean you have to be known or famous. Greatness is in your community. Greatness is at the little church that you might be at right now. And, you know, although it may be little in, man, in man's eyes, that doesn't mean God sees it as that. That is, a, that is a breeding ground where David is learning how to kill lions and, and bears. And so I think it's so important to clarify it's, that because we, we see people being pastured by YouTube nowadays. I posted a video not too long ago. I, obviously, I, I ended up getting on um, Motiversity, became one of the Motiversity speakers, which is the largest motivational channel on YouTube with 1.25 million subscribers. It was incredible. And I posted that. a video of a speech that I'm giving to Motiversity that has a quarter million views on it. Now, incredible. I went back a couple of years, maybe like seven, eight, nine years ago, to a sermon that I was giving to my youth group, which we only had 30 teenagers sitting there at the time. Mm. I'm saying the exact same thing. Like, like I'm literally listening to myself and I'm saying, Wait, this is the exact same. And I posted it on YouTube in 2011. I posted it on YouTube and I got no views on it. No, no. Wow. Here it is, maybe nine years later. I'm giving the same, I'm, 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 I promise you. I'm not saying anything much different than what I said <laughs> that day. And I'm kind of saying it the same way I said it then. Because it's my voice. It's the way I talk. Quarter of a million, 250,000 views. And I'm sitting there saying, okay, so... It's not, it's not the content. It's, it's, there are seasons of your life. And in that season, I was committed to that 30. Well, I had a quarter million view content that I'm giving to 30 teenagers. Mm. I don't know it because nobody watched this. So it's easy for me to say, oh, this is why, you know what I'm saying? 
But no, it, it's, it's the same content. It's, it's the season of your life. Mm. And so when you're looking for greatness, Man. be careful when you're trying to find someone who looks like, oh, you only have zero, you only have zero views. Yeah, but it might be a quarter of a million view content that they're giving. Come on, B. And you might miss it if it's not in the package so that good. you think it should be. Yeah, that, so the message was right the whole time. The whole time. The timing in the season was just not there yet. Just not there yet. And so the preparation piece comes. So you have the vision of you know where you're going. You know you're going to be a preacher. I, not everybody knows this, but he's also a singer. I mean, th- this dude can. This dude, <laughs> stop it. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I remember, so I, like, I listened to your Motiversity yeah. on, on Spotify. I remember pulling it down from Jubilee yeah, Worship. Yeah, yeah. I'm pulling it yeah. down. <laughs> dude, I'm like, dude, this guy is so, it's so good. <laughs> so you're just, you're just working, producing. Um, talk to me real quick about like the soul care piece. So you have, you've, you've reached uh, a bunch of success. You have a validated voice. You are a voice to our country, one of them. And talk to me about, because you've heard it your whole life, you know, a lot of times it's not failure that's a scary thing, it's really success. Absolutely. And so as success hits, as your voice now has weight and carries significant weight, talk to me, talk to some of the young guys that are coming up and what are some danger things you see? What are some signs you see? Or what are you doing now to steward the platform and the weight of your voice that you have? I think the first and foremost thing, you want to be submitted to your pastor. You want to have a pastor, a mentor, a coach. Um, my pastor's not my fan. Mm. To be honest with you, I still, he maybe in the last two, three, four years, he maybe has said once, good job. Like he doesn't, Usually he's going to tell me when I'm not doing well. Mm. And I realized that you don't need everyone to be a fan. Uh, you need some people who will sharpen you. To my wife, my wife humbles me because my wife makes me take out the trash. My wife makes me wash the dishes. My wife is like, oh, taking them kids. You know what I'm saying? My wife <laughs> is like, because my wife knows the me that's off stage. And so I'm not saying that they're necessarily two different people, but it's two different spaces of, of, my, of sure. my life. And so my wife makes me, she reminds me I'm human. Mm. When everyone's telling me how great it is and how, you know, my wife knows the real deal. Mm. And I think she keeps me, she keeps me, me, me settled. Um, and then friendships, you know, I have great friendships. Uh, there should be somebody in your life who doesn't need you to be amazing. Mm. Um, where you can be vulnerable to, where you can just be foolish with, that you can just say things and not be judged. Um, and then I try to just really keep, keep that relationship with God the way it needs to be. Mm. Um, because it's good. success is dangerous, man. I, I, it's success is dangerous. I heard Dave Ramsey say one time, you can eat so much steak. No, he said he ate so much lobster until it began to taste like soap. Wow. And he was like, he spent his whole life trying to eat lobster. And now he don't even want it no more because it's eventually success tastes like soap. Eventually it's like, give me success, success, success. And then when you reach it, you know, it's like the thing about success that's just, as that is, is that is deceptive is it doesn't have a finish line. Mm-hmm. And that's scary. My gosh. Every time you get to one level of success, the line moves. Man, if I could just have 10,000 followers. The moment you get 10,000 followers and you can swipe up, the next thing you're going to, you're going to enjoy it for two seconds. And the next thing you're thinking is, what if I had 20? You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> then as soon as you get 20, you're going to be like, but 30 looks good, you know, <laughs> it doesn't stop. It's a never ending cycle. So you have to define success today so that everything that comes after that is just icing. That's so good. So good. So much to say. I feel like, uh, you know, you need people. I think this is really important. I think this is encouragement for some of you. You need people. Obviously, we see your Superman, but we need people to see your Clark Kent every once in a while. You need some friends, some community, your wife. Thank God for our wives that keep us Absolutely. grounded, that keep us humble. My wife certainly does. She's a Latina. That girl will <laughs> as soon as anything pops up. So uh, I, think, I think you need to be a human being. You're not just this superhero a lot of times. Successes can be dangerous. And I love that line Dave Ramsey was saying. Success can eventually taste like so- I mean, the lobster can taste like soap. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I ha- so I have two more things, and then we'll wrap it up. You said, you said this. You cannot build your legacy while staring at somebody else's. Mm. Oh, man. Mm. Comparison. Talk about it. Woo! Comparison is dangerous, man. And it, it's, it's probably it's the number it's one, poison. probably the number one killer of dreams today. Mm. Um, the number one killer of potential. 
it is the idea of comparison. I just put this video on YouTube, on Instagram, and some reason it's going crazy right now. It's just going nuts. Of the single person sitting in Starbucks, having a latte, enjoying their day, and then a couple coming in mm. and sitting next to the single person, and the single person is looking at the married couple who's romantically looking at each other and drinking one another's coffee, and now the single person who was satisfied a second ago is now dissatisfied. Like, see, I wish I had somebody. If I could just be with one person, everything will be okay. Little does a single person know that the married couple is sitting over there. They're looking at the single person by themselves, reading a book, and they're thinking, man, if I could just get one hour by myself. Like, if I could, <laughs> thank God for you, but a day, a, day, a day to myself would be sweet. And so the married couple's looking at the single person like, oh my Lord. And the single person looking at the married person like, ah, oh, we're both comparing mm. <laughs> to each other. Mm. Uh, and it's making us not be present where we are. Mm. And legacy is difficult when it's not yours. Mm. When legacy is something you copy from someone else, it's not a real legacy. And if I can get people to find your happy, find your success, find, find, define it for yourself now mm. so that when other people try to bring other things into your world, uh, you can say no easier. And I think you have to be comfortable. I love what I'm seeing you doing. I love how you serve your dad. Obviously, you can go to so many different places. You could be all over the country at this point. Um, but you found your happy. You, you mm. found your purpose. And you found contentment in it. And so the Lord will bless you. And I've learned this. I've been in, you know what I learned, man? It's crazy. When I was in Boston, I was anointed. And I remember feeling like, man, but can I do it in Denver? Like. And I moved to Denver and I preached at the Potter's House, one of the biggest platforms ever. And I realized I was anointed at the Potter's House. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to North Carolina and I'm at one of the largest churches in the area. And I realized, oh, I'm anointed in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has shown me it's not the location. I've anointed you. Mm -hmm. That's good. And wherever you are, <laughs> I will be <laughs> because we're in connection together. So for anybody who's like, man, I live in such and such a place. If I could just move to, it's not in LA. It's not in New York. It's not in Atlanta. It's the anointing is on you. So good. And wherever you are, if he's there, you'll be blessed. So good. Yeah, the anointing is not in a location. It's on the person. It's on the person. It's on the person. And I think you, you showcased that so well to us, B. Thank you for inspiring us. I love this. One of my favorite teachers, Dr. Darius Daniels, he says it like this. He goes, uh, you can uh, desire, you can admire, but don't desire. So especially when it comes to uh, you know, watching other people and wanting to have what they have. Admire, don't desire. Or another way people say it is be a student, not a critic. Yeah. And I am, I have learned so much from you from a distance, from up close. You and Manny, Manny, I appreciate him so much. I have studied how you guys have done it, asking questions. I think that's the best thing you can learn from something like this. It's just, you see somebody that's killing it, ask a question, send a DM. Just be hungry, be humble, and watch God propel you because wisdom is uh, when you're asking other people and humility is when you don't think you have all the answers. And so the last question I have for you, B, would be this. is just, why do, why do they need to get this? Why would they need to get this book? If they haven't been convinced already, why? Why is this so important? Why is this an important message? Yeah, I think it's an important message because everybody needs a blueprint. Mm. And most people don't know where to start. Uh, most people are like, man, okay, I want success. I want mm. this, this thing you guys are describing. I want to build legacy, but I'm not sure what it's going to take to get there. And so this book, we actually literally call it, it's a blueprint for creating a life that matters. And I don't want you to spend the rest of your life uh, living a life that you'll regret. I want you to live one that you look forward to. Mm. And this book is really about giving people hope and giving people an opportunity to say, let me make a plan for my life. Let me stop winging it. Mm. Let me stop letting the day lead me. I know too many people who just say, I'm going to let the day lead me. And the day has done led you into depression. The <laughs> day has done led you into suicidal thoughts. I don't want you letting the day lead you. I want you leading your day. Jesus says these words in Matthew 6, 34. He says, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry yeah, about so. itself. That's right. And people have used that and misinterpreted it to mean that Jesus is saying, don't think about tomorrow at all. Mm. That word worry in Greek actually means to be broken into pieces. 
Jesus is saying, don't be divided about tomorrow. Well, don't be all over the place. Like, like don't be well, everywhere about tomorrow. Well, God can do it. No, he can't. Yes, he can. This is going to happen. This is gonna happen. You're worried about many things. That worry means you're broken into pieces. The Lord wants you to be whole. Mm -hmm. And when we start talking about legacy, it is you taking your life from the pieces and bringing the peace of God so to good. make you whole. So good. Don't be divided about tomorrow. Be focused. Don't be divided about tomorrow. Have a clear vision of where you're going. Mm. Your children need it. Even if you're, um, you don't have children yet, they need it. And our world needs it. Mm. Our world needs people who are living for something bigger than themselves and making their last name bigger than their first name. Well, if you are not convinced you're crazy, I would recommend to all my friends and family, our audience, I would just ask you guys to buy this book. Follow this man on social media. We're going to put his account or his tags and handles below here. Uh, but Brian, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. It's an honor. Uh, you inspire me. And uh, thank you for making me better and for investing in me, for investing in our community. And for all our trailblazers, you guys know the deal. We don't fear the future. We pioneer it. We love you guys. And we'll see you on the next episode.